that you can get to lunch and <laughs> eat. Um, yeah, thanks for having us. Um, we would like to present um, the both of us um, about our teaching and how we think about teaching BIM at our universities. And you, as you told already, I'm here with my colleague Tobias Meile from the University of Applied Science of Augsburg. Our colleague Reinhard Wimmer is uh, unfortunately missing. Um, he's from the University of Applied Science in Karlsruhe, but he also participated in this paper. And um, the three of us, um, that's why we came to the background, the three of us are um, yeah, new professors um, at our universities. We are all professors for digital design and construction. So um, we thought about working together to establish um, BIM courses and to work together on BIM courses and uh, to collaborate. Um, to yeah, have a uh, state-of-the-art teaching and education um, for our students. And that's what we want to present. And um, of course, we got a lot of challenges um, on our way to uh, have integrated teaching um, with our universities, um, but we also have some good reasons to do so. So that's what we wanted to explain to you. So of course, um, all of us, we came from um, yeah, a different point of view of um, academic research and um, BIM research. But for us, it's very important to have um, a project-based learning approach. Um, why is it like that? Because um, in literature, we found out that the project-based learning could increase the learning outcomes. And that's one of the main factors for us why we um, decided to do project-based learning. We also dis uh, discussed in um, the previous um, presentations that we, some of the universities are doing exams, um, some are doing other stuff to um, evaluate um, the students, but um, we decided to do project-based learning because um, students have to collaborate together, they have to work together, they get soft skills, of course, and um, many more things on their way, and not only um, the hard facts of BIM, like um, knowing, getting to know Revit or getting to know processes, BPMN processes and whatever, but they also get soft skills because they have to discuss with each other, they have to work together with each other, and that's what of one of the main factors from our point of view that students need to, um, yeah, to do BIM um, in the best way they could do. And um, we are doing the same uh, actually as professors because we are working together in um, an open-minded way and that's what BIM should do. Uh, we should use um, vendor neutral um, um, data um, bases, we should um, use data neutral exchange formats so um, that's very important for us, and that's why we share all our knowledge um, together um, from yeah, the perspective of professors. So um, that's how we um, did our um, teaching approach, and that's what we wanted to present you, um, our teaching approach. So what does it mean? We want to teach all relevant theoretical background and practical applications. That means we are not only focusing on theoretical background, like IFC or um, data exchange formats or um, yeah, theoretical uh, processing um, of processes, but we are also um, teaching practical applications. Yes, of course, that's software in many ways, um, but it's also how to exchange information with the other students, with the other um, staff, with the teaching staff, and um, that's what leads us to the fulfillment of the highest level of taxonomy of educational objectives. Um, I want to explain a little bit more because there are six steps in the taxonomy of educational objectives. Um, step one, and that's the lowest um, objective, is um, just knowledge. So everybody knows what I'm talking about. You, know, you have heard about BIM, you have heard about processes, and that's the lowest level. The highest level is um, evaluating things, um, to synthesize things, so that you know how to work with it, how to deal with it, and um, yeah, how to get things um, discussed and right done. And um, that's what we want to do, and we want to inspire our students to work with the big open BIM method. So that's our main aims. And therefore, we got a teaching approach um, with a, some kind of a puzzle, because of course we are teaching the BIM theory, as you can see here, with data, with technology, with the actors, we have seen already uh, a BIM manager and a BIM author and so on, with processes, BPMN processes, and with context, so regulations, standards, and so on. On the other hand, we are doing application tutorials, that means we are working with um, practical um, software tools, we are working with people from the practice who um, teach our students, and 
we also do project-based learning. So we are working on projects, on various projects, um, to get them working together. And of course, we are doing BIM practice, so a model-centric communication with BCF, with ICF, uh, IFC, <laughs> and so on. And how this works, um, will Tobias show to you in a half. Exactly. Okay, so the idea of the big open BIM method is that we are uh, collaborating between different disciplines like architecture, structural engineering, MAP, and that each discipline is working on their own models. So we call them partial models, and then in, within the discipline, the partial models go into the discipline or specialist models, and uh, at the discipline level, we then have, uh, of course, modelers who generate the models, but also coordinators who then coordinate the partial models into the specialist models. And then, um, basically, we use uh, the Common Data Environment, CDE, to actually coordinate between um, all those different disciplines. And this is typically done by someone who's called the project coordinator, uh, and they are basically forming the specialist model into this coordination model. So at, <clears throat> at different points in time, we basically take all the models together, put them together in a coordination model, figure out what's, where the overlaps are, um, try to resolve them, uh, recognize the, the issues, and then each discipline can go out and, and fix their issues again, and then we go back to the coordinate model um, afterwards. So for that, we use uh, the IFC model, uh, and of course the BCF standard basically to um, take track of all the issues uh, and uh, the things we find during coordination. So that's um, how we see the big open uh, BIM method and uh, one of the, the things that's important is also that um, we're trying to go away from uh, traditional lectures just standing in front of the students and talk all day long basically. Uh, we are trying to do more interactive things. Um, that's also kind of a uh, thing that we can do pretty nicely at the universities of applied sciences. So we are doing interactive questions. We are using the CDE, the common data environment, with the students. Um, we do different group work. Um, I especially like uh, doing group work where the students have to read or, or research something and then they summarize it in the group. Um, that's really a cool way to, to get to, into new topics and learn what it's all about. Um, and then stuff like peer-to-peer -peer grading and state of knowledge. And then I thought it's, or we thought it's best to show you uh, one of the projects that we've already been using in our courses. And this is a, a cross-disciplinary project at the University uh, in Augsburg, where we actually looked, looked at a school I'm sorry, the school is still in German. Um, where, so there's an existing school, and the idea was that we go in the school, we do uh, a digital survey, so we figure out what's already there, what's uh, <clears throat> the existing structure, and then we build a story on top of it to extend basically the size of the, of the school. So um, we had three different uh, programs um, working on, on this project. So the first program, uh, digital design and production program where I'm a professor at uh, did the digital surveying and then the program of energy efficient design did actually the, the additional story on top of it with also uh, thinking of course about sustainability and, and energy and then we had the, uh, the civil engineers actually do static calculations do uh, construction sequences and then again, the energy efficient students uh, did energy calculations, and together we came up with a completed design of various different groups. And um, kind of to go back to what we said earlier, we are doing that, and by, by working on the project, we are learning about how the process works and how we can actually improve the process. Uh, so we, the students actually learn that some of the things that they did uh, during the project were not the most efficient uh, ways to go about it. For example, one group uh, decided to not use the CDE, but use WhatsApp instead to communicate. It didn't work out that well. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the communication, and then also to go actually into the object details um, and really dig uh, into all the properties that, that are relevant and, and learn, learn stuff like 
if we have two or 300 uh, properties per object, that it's probably not the smartest thing to do uh, if we don't need most of them and it's really hard to find the single one property that I actually want to look for now. So um, two more things I brought uh, from this project. This is basically uh, the point cloud that we used in the school just to give you an idea of uh, how this looks like. And then there's another, um, let's just wait around, we get around the corner. Here we go. Um, and then this is just uh, basically the construction sequencing that the students did in the project, um, just to give you some ideas of, of the level uh, that we worked uh, with there. And then that's all from me. So Niels can finish up. And of course, we wanted to um, evaluate the results um, of what we have done. Um, first of all, we want to give you some um, information about the challenges we forced um, by working together with three u different universities. First of all, um, there are different curricula at the universities. That's one of our main problems. Um, as you can see here, these um, courses um, we want to put together um, in our um, BIM collaboration format um, are quite in different semesters. So there are some in the spring term, some are in winter term, some are in the um, yeah, sixth semester, some are in the fourth semester and so on, some are in the master. So it was quite uh, hard to get them all together. We have of course different backgrounds, experiences, and knowledge that results from um, the different um, semesters um, we are working in. And um, of course it's very hard to keep up to date because the software tools are quite um, Hard, um, quite quickly evolving. We have uh, many errors and quality issues with exchange data. This was one of the main problems because we were using IFC, we were using BCF, and it doesn't work in a proper way um, every time. Um, the grading of students um, is quite um, a challenge because we have to grade our students, of course, at different universities, um, but it was um, hard to get them all together. So if it, are we using written exams? Are we using product submissions, oral exams, or tests, or whatever? So um, grading the students was quite hard. And um, yeah, of course, as I told already, different semester starts and different semester ends. So for example, at our university, the semester starts one or two weeks before the other um, universities, and that's quite a challenge we have to force. And um, last but not least, we want to show you um, the success of our project-based learning. Um, we asked our students at the um, University of Applied Science in Cologne um, how they think about it. Um, so uh, as you can see here, um, one is a better grade than two. So one is the best grade, two is the second best grade, and so on. So as you can see here in the slide, um, the um, results were increasing. So um, the students are more interested in the topic of the course. That's one of our main um, outcomes. Um, they would like to deepen the topic in the future even more. And um, for us, it was quite amazing to see that um, the course motivates students for further studies. And that's uh, one of our main aims um, that we want to fulfill to, um, yeah, to teach students BIM and to motivate students um, to use uh, BIM. And of course, we want to give an outlook. Um, what we want to do, we want to set up hands-on collaborations between our universities even more and um, study programs. Um, of course, we want or would like to restructure the existing curricula to uh, put all these courses together. Um, of course, we are looking for even more collaborators across universities and study programs. And that's one of our main focuses at the moment to get even more universities um, come together with us. And um, one of the main aspects we are facing now and one of the main challenges, we want to add artificial intelligence content because for us, that's one of the main topics we are facing at, at the moment in BIM collaboration. Yeah, and that's our outlook, what we want to do in further research. And then we would like to thank you um, for um, listening to us. And yes, we are here to ask your questions. Thank you. Thank you.